everybody. My name's Nick, and this is my colleague Yannick. We're going to talk today about JavaScript and ML. TensorFlow.js is a library we launched last year. It's a library for training and deploying ML models in the browser and on Node.js. We want to showcase what you can do today with the uh, platform and where we're going. One of the great parts about the library is there's really no drivers install. If you run it in the browser, you can get out of the box GPU acceleration. The browser itself tends to be very interactive by nature, which builds really great applications and demos for using ML. And privacy is a very important part to the library. Uh, you can run inference and training locally on the client, which works around all sorts of privacy issues you might have with doing server-side inference or training. And what can you do today with the library? Well, we have a collection of like pre-trained off-the-shelf models that you can use without any knowledge of ML. We also have the ability to take existing Python models and convert them and run them in TensorFlow.js. We also have a full stack for training, inference, and low-level linear algebra, uh, and that runs in the browser in Node.js. And we also have a bunch of platforms that JavaScript can run on outside of just the browser. The first thing I want to showcase is some of our new off-the-shelf models we've, we've launched. Um, the first one, it's a bunch of pre-trained, uh, our, our off-the-shelf models are a bunch of pre-trained models. They are image, audio, and text classification models. And the APIs are all user-friendly. You don't have to worry about converting images to tensors or resizing. They're very high-level, easy-to-use APIs. These are available on NPM for local application development, or we also have pre-compiled hosted scripts as well. We're also working on this a lot in the upcoming year. We'll, we'll have more and more models as we go forward. The first model is BodyPix. We were actually showcasing this at our booth, and I want to show you how easy it is to use this model. So the first thing we need to do is include the library and our BodyPix model. This can be done with our pre-compiled scripts, so it's two simple imports. Now the next step is to, we'll just create an image in the DOM. So this is a body image detection thing. So I have a picture of my toddler trying to do yoga. It's kind of a funny picture that isn't so much a human just like this and finding arms and legs. So this is Frank. He's trying to do something on the couch. But I want to actually load the model and find body parts on Frank. So the first thing to do is to load the body pics model, just a simple one-line call. And the next step is to call one of the methods we expose, which is estimate person segmentation. And I can pass in a DOM element. This returns a JavaScript object with the width and height of the object or the image and a value for every pixel that was in the image, if it's uh, an arm or a leg or a head, et cetera. There's also a bunch of really easy use methods for doing filtering on the image. So I can take the results of that and then render it directly on the DOM. So it shows head, body, arm, and so on. Another model we just launched just a couple weeks ago is the toxicity model. It's a out-of-the-box text classification model. Again, to use this model, just we'll use the pre-hosted scripts, two lines of code. And then I'll load the toxicity model and ask the model to classify just some really lovely text, pretty PG, you suck and I'll get a result back, again, as a JavaScript object that has uh, the nine, or seven labels that we identify different types of toxic type text and the probabilities and if it matches. We also have the ability to take pre-trained Python models and run them directly in browsers. So if you have a pre-trained model today that's already been trained in Python world, we have a command line tool that makes it really easy to serialize the model as a JSON object and the weights and distribute them in a web format. We support save model, TF hub, and Keras models. The converter itself right now supports over 170 and counting ops. And we will be to TensorFlow 2.0 compatible. I want to walk through how, how simple it is to use this. So I have a Python model. I run it through the command line tool. And then I can easily just load that in my JavaScript application. Very simple. And with that, I want to hand it off to Yannick, 
to walk through our training APIs. Thanks, Nick. Um, so in addition to working with pre-trained models, uh, TensorFlow.js also allows you to author and train models directly in JavaScript, both in the browser and in Node. The primary tool for this is the Layers API, which is a Keras-compatible API for authoring models. There's also a lower-level op-driven API if you need fine control over model architecture or execution. And we're going to take a quick look at what TFJS code for training looks like. And the main takeaway is that it's pretty similar to using Keras in Python, but follows JavaScript conventions. So the first step is to import the library. And when working in Node.js, you can also use the Node.js bindings, which execute the TensorFlow operations using native compiled C++ code. If you're on a system that supports CUDA, you can import TFJS Node GPU to get CUDA accelerated performance when doing training or inference. And this is what creating a convolutional model for a classification task looks like in JavaScript. As you can see, it's very similar to Keras code in Python. We start by instantiating a model, we add our convolutional layers, and we finish our model definition by adding a flatten operation and a dense layer with a number of output classes. Similar to Python, we use model.compile to get it ready for training, and here we specify our loss function and our optimizer. And model.fit is the function that drives the train loop. In JavaScript, it's an async function, so here we want to wait for the result or wait for it to be done. Once the model is done training, we can save the model. And here we're saving it to the browser's local storage. Um, we support saving it to a number of different targets, both on the client and on the server. And finally, just like you're used to, you can use model.predict to get a result from the model. So over the past year, we've also heard feedback from the community on ways we can improve the experience of training with TensorFlow.js. And two particular requested areas are that of data management and data visualization. So we'd like to show you some of the progress we've made in those areas. So first up is TF Data, and it's an API for managing data pipelines to drive training. It's a JS analog to Python's TF Data, and provides a whole set of utility functions for data set transformation. And finally, it works with streams, and the lazy evaluation allows you to work with data that doesn't fit in memory, which can be quite important. So let's take a look at a simple example. So here, we load up a CSV file using TF Data CSV loader, and we specify that we want to predict the price column using the isLabel attribute. Um, so this is going to set it as a label in future transformations. So for example, in this map transformation, um, the price data has been separated out into that Y's object, and the rest of the features are in the X's object. Once we flattened our data, we can now apply its sort of typical ML transformation operations, including things like shuffling, which is an ML best practice, and um, batching, which will do the work of creating properly sized mini batches for training, uh, and know what to pull into memory when, when the train loop is running. And other kinds of transformations you may, may want to do here include things like normalization. And finally, we run the train loop on this data set. So model.fit data set is an analog to model.fit that supports consuming TF data sets and knows how to sort of pull the right stuff into memory as needed. And that's um, TF data. So the other area we've been responding to community feedback is that of visualization. And the first thing I want to talk about here is TFJS Viz, which is a library for in-browser visualization of model behavior. So with it, you can view training behavior, model internals, as well as evaluation metrics. And we're going to take a look at the first two. Um, so first, we import the library. And here you should note that we do provide TFJS Viz as a separate package. And to visualize training behavior, we can use this show.fitCallbacks function. And we're going to specify a named drawing area to render the charts to, as well as our metrics that we want to see. So in one line, um, show.fit callbacks will plot our selected metrics. In this case, our loss and our accuracy metrics on batch end and at the end of each epoch. So this lets us view how the model is converging live in the browser. Let's us adjust hyperparameters as usual. You can also look at model internals with functions like show.modelSummary and show.layer. And similarly, we pass these named drawing areas. Um, and here we see the architecture of the model, um, including things like output shapes of various layers and the number of trainable parameters. Um, and in this example, we also see the distribution of values in the first um, convolutional layer of this network. 
including important statistics like NANDs and zero counts, which are useful for debugging models. Uh, and finally, we also want to announce TensorBoard support in Node.js. Now you can monitor training performance right in TensorBoard when using the TensorFlow.js Layers API in Node. And you can see what that looks like. So a single line will generate the necessary callbacks to write the model metrics to a TensorBoard log file using this tf.node.tensorboard command. Then you can open it in TensorBoard and look at how your training is going, just like you may be used to. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Nick to talk about some of the platforms we execute on. JavaScript's an interesting language because it actually runs in a lot more places than you think. There's the traditional browser front for running JavaScript in the browser. We, we all know about that. Node.js is a big server-side solution, very popular. But there's also a growing trend with JavaScript in more places. One of them is desktop applications. Electron is a very, very popular um, platform for developing applications. Those of you who have used the Spotify desktop application or Visual Studio Code, those are good examples of Electron. And JavaScript is also moving into the mobile space. I want to highlight a couple of uh, examples that we've seen in the industry on all four platforms. The first is the browser. Our friends at Google Creative Labs have built a series of experiments to explore how creative tools can be more accessible for everyone. Uh, there's going to be a great lightning talk on this tomorrow, and I encourage you to go. And they'll talk about everything they've built with this project. Uber has built a in-browser tool for model agnostic visualization of ML performance. They use TensorFlow.js for acceleration of their linear algebra, uh, k-means clustering, kl divergence computations, and so on. They are also giving a great lightning talk about how they use TensorFlow.js to solve this problem for their platform. And again, this is all in browser. Another really cool industry example is Airbnb. Airbnb built a uh, identity document detection model that they use as a full TensorFlow ecosystem solution. So they, uh, on your Airbnb profile, if you were to upload a government-issued ID, is a very big um, trust and safety issue. So the trust team in Airbnb built a TensorFlow model to detect if an, a profile picture that you're trying to upload directly in the client contains government-issued IDs. They use this in the browser using TensorFlow.js, as well as on their mobile devices with TF Lite. On Node.js, uh, a good example of this being used in the industry is Clinic Doctor and Clinic JS. This is a Node.js performance analysis tool, and they use our Node.js bindings to filter out GC spikes on uh, node processes that are running to give a true accurate CPU performance benchmark. And on the desktop, our team here at Google with Magenta and their uh, music generation models have built a series of desktop plugins for the Ableton Studio. So these app are little mini applications that are full desktop applications that use the Magenta models and accelerate them all into GPU and desktop applications. And we have a demo at our booth as well for how this works. Again, the really cool part is all JavaScript and GPU acceleration on the desktop um, with no CUDA drivers all through our WebGL bindings. And mobile is another interesting space. WeChat, for example, is one of the most popular apps in the world. They have over 1 billion total users and have a sub-application platform called the Mini Programs. Uh, the Mini Programs are great because it's a no-need install app in advance, use on demand, and it has over 1 million apps and 1 and 1.5 million developers. The Mini Program itself is built using JavaScript, and it makes it really easy for developers to create and deploy and share these on the WeChat platform. I actually want to show a demo of one of our TFJS models running on WeChat. So I have a, just a regular iOS device here, and I'm going to open WeChat. Someone shared with me this TFJS example, and I can load up the application, and it's running our PostNet model. And if I aim it at Yannick here, I can do. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is just purely done in JavaScript, and it's running our off-the-shelf mobile net model, and we're doing about 30 frames a second 
And this is all done with the WeChat JavaScript platform. Thank you. So all this work over the past year and the fantastic projects created by the community uh, makes us very excited to announce TensorFlow.js 1.0 today. It's available now, and we're super excited to see what the community builds with it and hope that the API stability will make this even easier for developers going forward. Um, and really with this release, we're focusing on two main things, providing a stable API that you can build applications on and make managing your upgrades easier. Um, and we're also bringing market improvements in performance, particularly on mobile devices. And we'll look at that in a bit more detail. Um, so to look at it a bit closer, since we announced TensorFlow.js last year at the Dev Summit, um, we've been steadily working on performance improvements across a number of platforms. And today we see increases of about 1.4x to 9x in some extreme cases. So this chart shows inference performance uh, with a batch size of one on MobileNet in Chrome. So MobileNet is a mobile-friendly image classification model. And we see inference times going from about 15 milliseconds on a modern laptop with discrete graphics uh, to about 150 milliseconds on the Pixel 2. Um, and over the past year, we've been able to do quite a bit of work to improve performance on iOS devices as well. So really excited for you to try this. So what's next for us? Well, we want to enable you to execute saved models on our Node.js backend without going through the conversion process. And this will open up many more models to be able to serve using the Node.js stack. We want to provide more off-the-shelf models, like we talked about earlier, to make it easier to build ML-powered JavaScript apps without getting into the nitty-gritty of machine learning models. Um, we're always keeping an eye on browser acceleration proposals, like SIMD and WASM, as well as emerging proposals like WebGPU and WebML. So the browser is only going to get faster, and so will we. And finally, we also want to work on expanding the platforms on which TensorFlow.js can run. So for example, we saw examples of Electron and things like WeChat. Uh, but we're also working on um, platforms like the Raspberry Pi and other hybrid mobile uh, platforms that run JavaScript. So thanks. And for more information about the things we talked about, uh, you can visit any one of this, these links. Thank you. <laughs>